You know, you really need to stop being quite so positive. <laughs> yes, you heard me right. Come on in and let's talk about it. Welcome to Happy Stuff and Fluff, a channel for women who are getting happy, living longer and growing younger. Yay! Oh gosh, it's really not me, is it? <laughs> and how exhausting, how exhausting. Imagine living with someone who's upbeat and positive all the time. Um, Yes, it isn't me. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about um, false positivity, or a term you may have heard, which is not one I care for, um, toxic positivity. But I do know where they're coming from, and I also understand that it can be dangerous, which is why I wanted to talk about it, because you will have heard the term. It's being banded about all over the place. So it's a bit rich from me, isn't it? Um, you really need to stop being so positive when I have see the good on one side and believe that good things are going to happen on the other. Um, well, I do believe those things. And you know, I am a very positive person. My whole life, I've studied personal growth and positive psychology have helped me to develop a truly um, positive uh, personality. Um, and helped me to build the resilience, if you like, to be able to deal with or better deal with a lot of the experiences that I've had. Um, however, positivity is not always appropriate. I've talked before about the fact that in positive psychology, um, we address negative emotions and understand that negative emotions are vital to us. Um, negative emotions, thoughts and feelings alert us to the fact that there's something wrong and something needs action. And so we need them. The problem with our society today is that, um, you know, I've said before, we have a negativity bias as human beings, which goes way back it's a part of evolution. Um, in way back when, thousands of years ago, there was a good chance that there would be a saber-toothed tiger around the corner waiting for you. And so um, it kept you alive being negative. Of course, we don't have that anymore. But unfortunately, um, in our society, we are struggling with negativity and we are caught up in this downward spiral of negativity. There is more depression now um, than, uh, than there ha has ever been before. Young people are committing suicide. Women over 50 are depressed and drinking more. For all of those reasons, I want to um, teach and to talk about on Happy Stuff and Fluff ways that we can increase our happiness levels, develop your positivity to be able to build the resilience to deal with um, the negative experiences that life inevitably throws at us. That's why I do what I do. Um, but as I say, positivity is not always appropriate. Um, let me give you, well, first of all, what do we mean by toxic positivity then? Exactly that. It's kind of forced positivity. So it's when you are either talking to someone else or to yourself when uh, they're going through a difficult time, for example, and you say things such as, um, well, it could be worse. Um, it's, uh, you know, you've got to try to be positive, stay positive. Um, it's all good. Things are going to be okay. Don't worry about it. Don't be so negative. It's those kind of uh, things that I said. So it's about, it's the idea that you have to try to maintain a positive mindset at all times. Um, it often denies uh any negativity or fails to acknowledge any negativity and kind of brushes bad things under the carpet to the extent of denying reality. That's what we mean by toxic positivity. And those are some examples, the idea of saying to someone, um, you know, you've got to be positive thinking now and um, don't be so negative and you need to snap out of it and all of those kind of things, everything's be, gonna be okay. Well, why is it dangerous? Um, Positive 
Positivity becomes toxic when it dismisses someone else's feelings, when it shuts those feelings down. And I'll give you an example. Um, it's a bit of a dark humour involved, so you need to forgive me for that. Um, many of you know that my mother died young with cancer and my sister died at the age of 46 with cancer. Uh, and of course, Charlotte more recently, um, more recently than that. And... Um, you know, people around us didn't know what to do with that. They they really didn't know what to do with that. Now, some people stayed away altogether. Personally speaking, to me, that's far more toxic than someone actually coming to me and saying, um, you know, everything's going to be OK or you need to move forward with positivity. Uh, but that's a whole nother video. Um, but people did actually come and say uh, things like that to us. And then um, the dark humour aspect was when my sister was, um, or when she was dying, we'd gone to a hospital appointment and she'd seen the consultant and she'd been given some bad news. And when we came out of the consultant's office, one of the nurses, whom she knew, uh, because she'd been so often, of course, she'd got, got on with the staff quite well, um, the nurse came over and put a hand on, um, on Pat's arm, my sister, and said, Remember, Pat, you need to um, you need to be positive thinking now, OK? Oh, I was horrified and kind of stopped in my tracks. My sister, quick as a dash, quick as a flash, said, Oh, yes, I am positive. I am positive me. And right out of her mouth at the side, she said to me, positively dying. Now, obviously, that's a shocking thing to say, but it made me laugh. My sister was sharp. She had a wicked sense of humour. Um... And I know laughter and humour is uh, serves as a protection, but I started to laugh. And when she saw me laugh, she immediately started to laugh too. And before long, we were both kind of rolling, laughing out of the hospital. Um, it wasn't funny at all, of course. And to say to my sister at that time, and a nurse, <gasps> um, you need to be positive thinking, was completely inappropriate. However, the nurse was saying it, it was coming from a good place. It was clumsy, but it was coming from a good place. And I think that's why, you know, what people, when they say these things, um, they think it's, they think it's helpful or they don't know what else to say and they're hoping it's uplifting. It isn't uplifting. It isn't uplifting. Uh, if, you, if you look at this image, um, have you ever felt like this where you've been concerned about something? Not necessarily that there's, as bad as someone dying, just a bad day at work or a relationship that maybe um, that you're worried about and you confide your feelings to someone and they say, oh, come on, everything's going to be OK. You need to be positive. Stop thinking so negatively. Um, be positive. Everything's going to be OK. There's people worse off than you are. And you smile and say, yes, you're right, I, I am, I am going to be more positive. But inside you are dying. Because your feelings have just been completely dismissed. Now, what can happen there is you can start to feel ashamed because you're feeling bad about a particular thing and that, yes, there are people in the world worse off than you. And maybe you really should be feeling more positive. Let's get rid of these negative feelings and start being positive. You know, we know what happens to negative feelings when you try to push them aside like that. It's like rub, it's like try to push a beach ball under the sea. What happens is, yes, you might be able to push it down, but it's going to come bobbing up all over at inappropriate times, causing all kinds of ill health and depression. It can cause shame as well, as I say, because you feel you should be feeling positive. You're not feeling positive, but you're going to try and force yourself to feel positive. So what's the answer to this then? What is the answer to this? If you've ever felt like that, please tell me about it in the comments box below. You know, where you've tried to put on a brave face when really you were dying inside. Let me know in the comments box below. It's a horrible feeling, isn't it, when your feelings have been dismissed. The way to go about this, first of all, if it's you yourself, um, this phrase I first heard from, oh gosh, what's her name? Um, I'll leave her name here somewhere, from Abraham. Uh, 
when talking about instead of thinking to yourself, right, I need to be more positive, think to yourself, I need to reach for a better feeling thought. That's your first step. Just a better feeling thought. So let's say, for example, you, you let's say you hate your job and you've been going for other jobs, but you're not getting another job and it's starting to get you down and you're worrying about it. And this negativity is bringing you down, um, down the downward spiral to depression. What you need to do is to think, ask yourself, perhaps you could think to yourself, well, is there any part of this job that I enjoy? And what part of this job? It can't all be bad. You you know, there was something about the job that made you go for it in the first place. What is it about the job that I like? Even if it's just a tiny thing, maybe I could introduce more of that into the job to make it a little bit better for me whilst I continue to look for another job. Now, once you do that and you get just a smidgen of positivity, uh, right, okay, there's something I can do when it puts you back into control, then you're on the upward spiral of positivity. And we know that positive emotions broaden and build and help you to be more creative in thinking about or thinking your way out of the situation that's causing negativity in the first place. That's the way to do it yourself. Now, if you're speaking to someone else who's struggling, um, and of course you're tempted to say, be positive, um, and it's coming from a good place, think about engaging your empathy strength. And instead of saying that, you could perhaps say, first of all, you could say, um, this must be really difficult for you. Such a powerful phrase, this must be really difficult for you because you are acknowledging the situation is difficult and it's difficult for them. It must be difficult. How can I help? Or you could say, I'm really sorry you're having to go through this. I'm sorry you are having to go through this. I have your back. We can do this together. What can we do? Let's reach for something for a better feeling thought and maybe you can help and guide them in that, um, in that direction yourself. Acknowledging their negativity, acknowledging the difficulty, apologising, not necessarily saying I understand what you're going through, because I've said this before too. Um, you know, when you say to someone, oh, yeah, I, I understand how you are feeling, it's not necessarily true, even if you've experienced exactly the same thing as them. Um, you don't necessarily feel the way they do. So it's not about understanding how they feel, but it's about understanding the situation must be difficult. And I'm sorry you are having to do this. You're having to uh, deal with this matter or go through this. What can I do to help? Those are all things um, that uh, acknowledge what they're going through and you're offering your help, which means they are not lonely with the situation. Okay, um, I hope that's helpful if, if ever you find yourself in a situation where you're trying to help someone going through a difficult time to uh, not to um, jump into this thing of um, don't worry, everything will be okay. Um, there are other ways, better ways of dealing with it. Let me know what you think as always. And remember that on the happy stuff and fluff, we are getting happy, living longer and growing younger. That was more like me, wasn't it? See you next time. Bye-bye.